Hey, you with us, Joel? I am here. Awesome, man. Well, welcome everyone to the Magical Stories of Healing and Spiritual Gifts podcast. I'm David Staub. I'm here with my always amazing wife, Megan. Hi, everyone. And we wanted to take a second to thank everyone. We reached over the, uh, we're just about the 600 download mark at, at nine episodes in. So we can't thank everyone, all the supporters enough. We are super, super excited uh, to, for personal and professional reasons, to bring you our uh, guest today. Uh, we have with us, Joel's got the keys for all your real estate. Uh, Joel, <laughs> Joel, Joel Valdevez, man, we have, I've been personally, I know Megan, it's kind of funny. I've been personally, we've been following each other for years now, actually. We've never met in yeah. person. We've been following each other with content for years now. And I recently introduced Megan, what was it, about a year ago? Maybe a little less. No, it was less than that. Yeah. But it's funny because I'm just so, I'm so picky too. And there's just some people I'm like, I read the stuff that you post. I'm like, oh my God, he gets it. <laughs> to listen to everything that you say and you talk about i love watching your live videos and man like you're just up to some amazing things yeah Thank yeah you. we're i mean it's everything from freaking spirituality to mindfulness uh to sales i vibe with you on multiple levels too because sales i have over a decade of sales experience and uh you you, you one things i've always loved is trying to mix uh my purpose and sales with mindfulness and you do that so well so thank you uh, so many different fronts we're excited to talk to you about on and uh just kind of get help you get your message out there because you are onto some powerful powerful stuff man from uh, you're, I don't know if you're not just your ayahuasca experience, but uh, you know from psychedelics to everything else. So welcome, Joel, man. Yeah, thank you for having me. It's uh, really excited to be here, and you guys got me all hyped up, fluffed up. <laughs> so uh, yeah, yeah, you got me in my uh, shy side. I'm blushing right now. <laughs> oh man, that's, that's ironic because we never see that side on social media. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> anyway, we usually wait till the end to talk about it. But anyone ever needs some positivity or anyone ever needs some introspection uh man get on joel's got his instagram it is it is fire so thank you uh, but man so i guess to start out um talk to us a little bit about your childhood before all before all this mindfulness before all these awakenings happen we'll get to all that in a second how well, talk to us about your childhood how'd you grow up did you grow up religious yeah man so um i grew up in a small town i was born in apple valley california i moved to victorville when i was nine which is literally uh the city over it's about an hour and a half away from los angeles uh, desert town i uh, grew up with a mom and a dad and a sister and honestly my childhood i didn't realize that people had such difficult childhoods until i got into high school and i started hearing people like share all their stories about the stuff they went through i was like holy crap i had a really easy childhood yeah so i grew up in a, a christian home and uh honestly my childhood was really awesome my, my parents uh, they're awesome and they've always supported everything that uh, I've got into and, and started doing. So, yeah, I don't know nice. if you need a more in-depth <laughs> uh, explanation. No, 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 that's good. I'm always interested to hear about that. Well, I have a question. So did you consider yourself up until probably, I'm assuming this point, um, did you consider yourself religious? Yeah, I would say so. Um, especially in high school, I got like really deep into uh, Christianity because my my family actually uh, runs a church and my uncle ran a pretty big church in the high desert which is the area that i grew up in um he recently passed away last year but really really mm. incredible man uh he did a lot for the community helped a lot of people uh that were homeless on drugs just completely turn their life around and uh yeah so i grew up under that kind of just looking up to that my whole life and yeah honestly great experience awesome nice mm -hmm. um so I'm gonna ask the awakening question in a second. I'm actually gonna put that on pause. We, one of the things you and I both uh, did right, right around the same time, there's so many synchronicities. We started doing this challenge a year ago. It was 5K a day for 100 days straight. Yeah. Um, and man, you know, I, I know we could talk about that for hours, but just briefly, I, I, you know, for me, I'm sure for you too, it's more mental surprisingly than physical. Oh, yeah. what, what was your what was your reason for doing a 5K a day every single day for a hundred days straight, posting about it every day? And what one what was your reason and what did you feel like you got out of that? Because um, yeah. a lot of people hear that and they're like, that's pretty freaking extreme. Yeah, and you know, I needed an extreme reason to do it because uh, my friend had been, 
telling me you got to do it you got to do it he was always challenging me pushing me and my higher self was telling me that you need to do this because uh if you really want to run like my goal is to have like a billion dollar company one day if you really want to run a billion dollar company you have to do things that the average person's not willing to do this is a great way to start uh but mm-hmm. i just couldn't i couldn't do it and uh what really pushed me was i needed something to push me and um around that time i had been seeing someone that really led to my my next level of awakening and uh i kind of like instantaneously fell in love with her and which i didn't even know was possible and we broke up and it honestly just it it broke me so bad and i honestly started running to avoid the emotional pain that i was feeling so whenever i would feel uh sadness i can honestly feel it right now like i i feel pretty worked up just talking about it um when i would feel that emotional pain or start having anxiety because i missed her i would just go and run and every time that i was running i would i would call it like alchemy i was taking that negative emotion that i was feeling and i was turning it into physical strength so uh that really led to me starting to expand my business uh because i realized that there was nothing anyone could say to me on the phone when i'm cold calling uh you know that could stop me because i'm like i i just ran 3 miles, you know, and and I'm doing this day in and day out. And when I would start meeting with new clients, I felt so confident because my body started changing, there was more strength, I was more confident, I walked more erect. So when I would walk into a room, you it just there was confidence there. And mm-hmm. uh it was honestly a very dark place in my mind when I would go running. Like if you ever heard like David Goggins talk about his dark side, I really would tap into that when I was running and that helped me I thought it helped me get over my breakup until later I would find out that I was just masking the hurt and it was still there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. Uh David Goggins is amazing. He has some good stuff out there. Um and so the 5k a day I have one quick question on that too. One thing for me that I didn't expect to happen, I started getting these insanely powerful uh messages downloads whatever you want to call them during my 5k's uh, yeah. i tried my best to do them in the morning most of i'd say 90 80% of them were in the mornings uh but whenever i you, did you get those downloads too those messages yeah um i would get really inspired uh to like make like content and stuff like that sometimes i would get like spiritual uh downloads and insights i can't remember any of them off the top of my head i just remember oh, yeah. uh you know yeah. having that uh one thing too that i will say that I don't think many people talk about and I've talked about this on my Instagram is I actually think that running is a very very good way to manifest things because uh I would get into a very deep state of they say if you really want to manifest things you have to feel the vibration of it I would feel whatever it is that I wanted and I would feel it so intensely in my body that it was like it was real you know my reticular activating system was just experiencing this thing that wasn't actually happening it was all going on in my mind and then what i would notice when i would like get done with my run go to work or whatever it might be i would start attracting the people that i was focused on or the scenarios or the types of situations and weird synchronicities and it was all really wow. channeled through my runs that's amazing yeah david would come back every single morning like <laughs> oh my god you're not going to believe the message i just got <laughs> yeah it's powerful i tell people you got to run no one wants to listen to me <laughs> yeah yeah it's a form of meditation man it, it really is. is yes um so was that right along cuz I mean correct me if i get the numbers wrong but i've just been i've been I've, as busy as i am i've loved you're one of the very few that i've just loved following thank you um you went from selling I I could be wrong on the numbers totally correct me but you went from selling 3 homes in 1 year to being a freaking top producer what 15 this last year is that correct is that right around that time frame and if that's true like how did you make that change for anyone listening that wants to change their professional life or sales or whatever um yeah so there was a few ways uh it really honestly started before the 5k and that was in 2018 That's when I came to the company that I'm at right now. It's called Intero Real Estate Services and they're very very big on sales training. Um so I was learning from um our leader Danny Morell. He's really really powerful uh with sales and just life in general. And he's kind of the one that opened me up to uh ayahuasca as well, but uh yeah, so I started coming here learning sales training and then honestly dating my girlfriend uh at the time. She had done some reiki on me cuz she's very intuitive and she she told me that some of my chakras were not balanced 
And uh, I didn't know what any of that meant at the time, but she pulled out this chart for me and it had the chakras and where they're at in your body and what it feels like and if they're depleted or overactive, what you're going to be experiencing. And I started to realize that really my root chakra was very, very depleted. And my third eye, like my third eye, my throat and my crown are very, very uh, active, um, as you can tell. And um, I just had trouble like actually manifesting anything and taking serious action and being aligned with the person that I would envision in my head. I just couldn't do it. So she really gave me like the tools to uh, to feel in my body when I feel off in certain scenarios. So something that I discovered from the 5K was that I started gaining confidence. And you know, they say confidence resonates in the solar plexus. And she put me onto that. So anytime that I would start to feel some unease or anxiety in my solar plexus, I would start to ask myself, well, why am I lacking confidence right now? What's going on that's making me feel unconfident? What can I shift to feel confidence in this type of situation? So then I started taking that energy into my phone calls. And also later on, I learned about like ayahuasca and tapping into flow states. And that helped because my business did start to take off during the 5K. But then it started to take a dip again and I didn't know why. And that's when I did ayahuasca and I kind of started to discover, okay, here's where I'm just just taking a dip and here's where things have been going wrong. And it was all like me not balancing my energy properly. Mm, Wow. I get that. That resonates. That's awesome, man. Yeah, Megan uh, just got her level one certification. She's going for your second achievement now, right? Yeah, but my goal is animal reiki. Oh, that's, that's what cool. I, I want to work on animals. <laughs> wow, that is really cool. I don't even know anything about yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, reiki. It's such a such an interesting, uh, cool thing, and so powerful. Whenever uh, you yeah, start to really learn it. Oh, it is. Um, um, that's awesome, man. Uh, so taking a little turn here for a second. Uh, before we get into all the psychedelic, oh, so if anyone's listening, basically, if you're in real estate or sales, you want to quadruple what you do, just take ayahuasca. That's it. <laughs> no, it's a, <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. Uh, so before we get into all the psychedelic stuff, um, which I know Megan and I are super excited to talk to you about, do you feel like there's a great awakening happening right now? And if so, um, when do you feel it began for you? Um, had you asked me this question a few days ago, I would have been like, yes. Uh, but I actually had this meditation the other day. And so this is like a twofold answer. I would say yes and no. Um, the other day I was meditating and I kind of just had a rough week, which I don't usually have too often. So I was like, what, what's going on? What am I like? How am I attracting this, this struggle into my life right now? And, uh, so I did a meditation to just kind of reset myself. And I started thinking about, the current state of the world, uh, knowing what I know now with where we're at with like war. And I just got back from Europe and it's so uh, politically charged over there and people are, it's just, it's a different uh, climate. And, um, and then I also honestly got into a pretty heated discussion with one of my clients and he's, he's from the hood. So he operates very different from me. I'm from the suburbs. I grew up in church. So I'm a very calm guy. And, uh, I just started realizing like, you know what? He was using the hood to validate his behavior. And so Mm -hmm. many people are running under this low state of consciousness. And it got me very, very sad. And I almost started crying uh, knowing what I know now. I'm like, my God, like I definitely feel like there is, is a mass awakening, but I feel like it's not, I know it's not our timing, but I just feel like it's not happening fast enough because it saddens me to see people in that state of consciousness when there's just such a better way to live and we can really let go of all these labels that we place on ourselves like the hood or color or all these countries and just being you know just being a soul um but it started happening for me in college actually uh, my i met wow yeah it, it started happening through music I, I make music and uh i met this guy i have a huge ego and ayahuasca has helped me with that uh, mm-hmm. the best uh, rapper in my city his name was was Remy and uh, I heard his music and I was like wow this guy's incredible but I'm better and uh, I don't <laughs> I just kind of set the intention out there to meet him and he invited me over to his house one day and we became extremely good friends and uh, he started just telling me about his journey and he made me a better songwriter he put me onto all these books I was watching a lot of ancient aliens at the time and I they would always talk about the Bhagavad Gita which is like the Hindu equivalent of the Bible and he had a Bhagavad Gita so I ended up getting my own copy 
and that really introduced me to a bunch of new concepts um, in in spirituality. And that's where it started. And then honestly, I went, I started studying every religion and it got to the point where I felt very alienated and I had like an existential crisis and uh, I just felt like I wasn't from planet earth. I felt like I didn't resonate with anyone. And I just felt very, very lost at this one point of my life uh, while I was in college. And I was searching for spirituality, kind of meditating. I was drinking a lot. And it was just a very, I'd say, dark uh, time for me. And uh, mm. through that, I kind of just always kept my, my meditation practice off and on, off and on. And then 2018 was really the year where everything started changing for me. It was one of the most difficult years of my life. I, I, uh, I sold three homes that year, as you guys know, and I was really struggling financially. But every so many months I kept meeting new people and it's like they were placed in my life for a reason and uh, they would teach me something new uh, the first person I met uh, I actually reconnected with him from high school his name was Corey he was a marketer 24 year old millionaire uh, through using click funnels wow. yeah wow. yeah <laughs> network marketer use click funnels millionaire he was helping me with my real estate business uh, and then I met uh, a guy by the name of Judah Peralta and he's really oh, Judah. yeah he's the one that challenged me to do the 5k and then i met me too yeah a great guy and then i met uh this girl named kim she's also a network marketer she would actually get offended if she heard me say that she does uh financial services i'm sorry kim and uh she really introduced me to psychology her story is, is absolutely incredible and she really got me into psychology the next person that i met uh her name was gabrielle and we had actually met in college and we reconnected. And that was who ended up becoming my girlfriend and really took me deep down the rabbit hole. Um, oh, backtrack real quick. While I was in college, I did smoke DMT with Remy one night and that was huge for me. Uh, we could talk about that later, now it's up to you. But uh, yes. Yeah, we can, we can come back to that. Okay. I got a couple questions. Cool, that. cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, so uh, what? keep going. Yeah, so when I met Gabrielle, that's when weird, really, really weird stuff started happening. Uh, my grandfather had just passed away the year before, and I kept having these experiences where it felt like I could feel him and like he was there and like he was contacting me. And I had never experienced this before. I had heard stories about it. It was just weird. And uh, I get, I actually get really emotional <clears throat> talking about this. So I'm trying not to cry. I told my mom, like, I can still feel grandpa. I can still feel him. And his his wife, my grandma, she she just passed away uh, yesterday. Uh, so rest in peace to her. 97. She was 97. Wow. wow. Um, yeah, so I just felt like I could feel him. And, and I told her, and she, she would do these readings for me, and she kind of told me where my life was going to go. And so before my business started to expand and grow, she had already told me it was going to happen very very mm. intuitive um and she told me that my grandpa was my guide she could fill him with me sometimes and mm. and uh she told me one time that we me and her were meant to do something very great and that i was meant to do something very great for the planet and when she said that to me it, it hit me like in the, the soul of my being i had to feel it in my solar plexus and it bothered me so much because i felt so fearful because my whole life I had felt this calling and I didn't know what I was meant to do. I didn't know why I was here. I just knew and I still know I'm going to do very, very great things in this life. But she was the one that like reminded me and confirmed it for me. I know now why I didn't know why at the time, but yeah. And then that's when I really set the intention to manifest the opportunity to do ayahuasca and it would come within the next five or six months where I got uh, offered the opportunity to participate in the ceremony. And yeah, wow. now we're here. <laughs> awesome, <Wow>. Sarah. <clears throat> One thing I did want to ask, because this is something that we're huge on. I mean, it whenever I began to awaken years ago, this was the aspect of things that really changed. It was a game changer for me. Uh -huh. And that's the law of attraction, you know? And 
most religious people are super against it. You know, like I have a lot of my family that they think it's bad. Yeah. And it drives me nuts. I'm like, you know what? They feel like you know, they should have, should go without so other people could have. I'm like, no, there's enough abundance for us all, you know? Yes. And so it's just so crazy to me because of all the fear-based conditioning. And I know you're big on the law of attraction. And I just wanted to see if you could speak um, to that. Uh, yeah. So, well, one problem that I have with religious people is they get very caught up in terminology. Um, oh, yeah. So, and, and honestly, to the point where it's quite ridiculous. So the other day I, I was in Spain and uh, I was having a conversation with my friend and I was talking about karma. And I said, you know, karma is actually in the Bible. He's a really big Christian. I said, karma is in the Bible, man. And I told him, I said, I gave him like a verse or whatever. And I said, that is literally the description of karma. The only difference is it doesn't say the word karma because it's in a different language. And, he, and then so he says, well, I don't And we have a conversation like later. And he's like, I don't believe in karma, but I believe in this. And I said, okay, you literally just said you believe in karma, but you're just refusing to use the word. It's <laughs> So, um, yeah, that, that's the problem I have, but um, the law of attraction is a very, very real thing. And I think that, uh, you know, the law of attraction is it, at every moment of your life is it's either working for you or it's working against you. I wouldn't say yep. that it's a good or a bad force. It just is a force that exists. And what really what we're doing is we're learning how to tap into it and use it for our benefit so that we can right. live a, a better quality of life, the life I feel that God intended us to have. Absolutely. Yeah, so that, that's a huge thing. I mean, I'm big on visualization, affirmations. Yep. You know, you, you really, really have to work on reprogramming your subconscious mind because if you don't, there's all these little programs that have been conditioned into you since childhood mm -hmm. that are running you. Like, for example, in my business, I've always had a very negative relationship with money and I didn't know where it came from. And like all of my mentors would tell me, um, like Corey told me, like, you got a problem with money. You got a problem attracting money. Kim would tell me, you have a problem attracting money. I forgot another mentor, but Justin, you, you got a problem attracting money. And I'm like, what is it? What is it? What is it? And then I started paying attention after I did ayahuasca to my family. I was sitting there one day and my mom was talking to my grandpa, my grandma, and my son is sitting there. And they're talking about how gas prices are high, how everything's so expensive. And that's all their conversation revolves around is money and the lack of money. And you're going yeah. to get more of what you focus on. But it, yep. that's why I don't look at gas prices. And when I do, I get mad at myself. I'm like, Joel, what are you doing? You're falling back into scarcity mindset. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, I'm very, well, I'm very, very big on like wherever you focus your attention and your energy, you're going to manifest more of that into your life. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, that's been proven repeatedly in my life. Yes. So affirmations. Yeah. Affirmations were a game changer for me. I know. I remember yeah. hearing that about your story. It was like, a, honestly, after after I heard your story, because I had kind of stopped doing my affirmations, I was like, I got to get back on these things. So I've been doing them every day. Yeah. I've been writing them down. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. yeah the, and the crazy thing about the law of attraction, you hit the nail on the head. It's in the freaking Bible too. It, like, it is. But people that people that are so heavily conditioned because of our fear-based society, if you say something like that, you can bring them actual facts in their own ver like it's crazy i'm not going to mention her name but i got into it i do my absolute best to not get into stuff on facebook or online yeah um and i and i'm not trying to like brag or anything but i've become a pretty much a, an alchemist wordsmith with the stuff because <laughs> I, I understand this stuff so well yeah and i understand religion i understand spirituality and i was like and i have no problem going in in a very mindful kind way but proving that in every single way that other person's wrong and i did that to this one heavily conditioned religious girl that was saying that the law of attraction is demonic mm. and i'm like well actually here's five bible verses and I, and I said what does this bible verse mean i think it was matthew 2 22 what you whatever you ask uh they believe you receive and have you shall have it and i said i said what does that mean to you and it was silence for like an hour and i tagged her, I'm like hey you know, you said this is demonic. What does that phrase, take law of attraction, the phrase out of it. What does that mean to you? And she's like, it means God's will. And I'm like, okay. Um, okay. I, I get that. I do believe in God's will. Absolutely. I'm in agreement. And she's like, and he's my God. I'm like, I believe it. He's my God. Too. <laughs> well, those words, those, I get that. But those words are physically saying what you believe you will receive. The law of attraction is 
what you believe <laughs> like and she and then the literally the next response was i don't want to argue with you i'm getting offline i'm like what the hell yeah <laughs> I, I, yeah. Um, I have but yeah a lot go ahead oh, i'm sorry um yeah no i have a few people they they do the same thing to me like they'll give me a really hard time and i've gotten to the point where i'm like i'm not even gonna converse with you guys anymore because it's just yeah, like you have to prove it to them like, right yeah you know, right right i know right right it's like been it's li- we've lived examples of it and the beauty is like god gives us the desires of our heart but he does so through the power of our mind megan told me that years ago and it stuck with me That's so good. much i've learned so much from her and that that phrase itself has stuck with me uh, because he, he does want us to live abundant lives like a lot of people it, man i, I don't go too much on it because i really want to get into your uh the psychedelic side of things the last thing i'll say on it is i feel like um, and this isn't a judgment thing on people whatsoever, but a lot of people have a hard time uh, with the law of attraction originally, especially religious people, because that means you have to take full responsibility for everything you don't like in your life. Yes. You have to say like, oh shit, it's actually my I fault. I created these problems. Like, I, it is my fault that I'm unhappy in all these things instead of like putting the blame on um, a bunch of other external things. Exactly. Um, and, because the law of attraction is that. But once you once you get over that hurdle, once you dilute your ego and say, okay, it is up to me. I mean, you could do anything you want in the world. Um, so it's, yeah, yeah, that's I have a whole thing on that. I Yeah, I wanna say something about that. So um, I heard this story one time about the law of karma. And what they said was that, you know, we in today's society believe that the law of karma is a, a religious um, philosophy. But what they said was that back in the day, the law of karma was not associated with any religion. It was an observation by the people of the time. So they would notice Whoa. these they would notice these patterns repeating themselves. And that became the law of karma. It then got adopted into like Hinduism and Buddhism. And I think it's the same thing with the law of attraction. They're simply observations. And that's what I tell my friends. I said, guys, everything I tell you, it's not a belief. It's an, it's an observation that I have. It's, it's an experience. experience. Yeah. Exactly. We set yeah. it in sync. That's what it is. And, and it's like yeah. for you to deny that honestly is kind of like you're, you're being kind of ignorant now <laughs> right and you're you're right. operating purely from ego to validate your belief but i'm experiencing uh, yes something. you know and another thing problem that i have and this no this relates to the bible people say god willing way too much at least my friends because they're arab um i even got it tatted on my arm it says god willing because i wanted to name my first album that um but i really feel like god gave us free will I yep. feel that it doesn't matter if it's good or bad, positive or negative. If you will it into existence, it will happen. That's why there's evil yep. in this world. God yeah. gave us free yep. will. So you are capable of doing anything. The only time that I like to say God willing now is like with my life because I don't really have control. I could go get in my car right now on my way home and die. I don't really have control over that. But in terms of like my business, my relationships, that is all mm. me. God gave me the ability to create my own life. And I thank God for that because God yeah. made me powerful and dope. Yeah. <laughs> and all yeah. of us, like all of us, we all are. Yes. You know, yeah. people think we got no power. They're always looking for power outside of themselves or blame outside. The blame is in you. The You're power so right. is in you. Man. And you know what? That's crazy. I want to touch on that because that is so true. You know, like we are so conditioned to, you know, believe that we don't have this power. And for example, when I got my Reiki attunement, Joel, it was the craziest thing. Oh. Not too long, like afterwards, like I knew I had a gift, uh-huh. but like I will be like in the grocery store or not during the holidays. I was at World Market during like holiday time, which was a horrible idea. And I'm like in there with my cart, and all of a sudden I start profusely sweating. Like sweat is like literally dripping down my legs. Everything like I look like I'm in hot yoga. Oh wow! Like, literally. And I'm like, okay, this is really inconvenient and uncomfortable. Like, what the heck? You know, and like, right when that happened, this like really rude lady like slammed into my car and didn't say anything. And I'm like, it's her. She needs help. You know, <laughs> like, that happens to me all the time. Oh, like, wow. if I'm around something that needs healing, I, my Reiki just turns on and I start like, this, my body gets hot and I, I've got to learn how to manage it. That's you know, amazing. it's still early for me. But yeah, like, I know it's because I have, I am powerful, you know, mm, and yeah. God, has given us all spiritual gifts they've just been lying dormant for all these years with people you know yeah completely agree 
I mean, an- oh, another yeah. another thing too is like I got into this argument with my friend the other night. We were, I was telling him about people in the Bible, and I said, "Hey, you know what? That the characteristics of this guy in the Bible, he reminds me of me." And uh, he's like, "You would compare yourself to him?" And I and I was like, "That's the problem. Yeah. We put these people we put these people in the Bible on a pedestal. When I really think that yeah. these people in the Bible they were so normal. Like th- some of these guys would sleep with multiple women. They would do like really bad things, and God still found a way to use them and yeah. empower them. And I'm like, yo, if I'm doing this in my life, and God, God can still use me to do great things, just like King David or like anyone else in the Bible. Yeah. Like, that that's the problem. We're always putting men on pedestals when we can be those men." Oh, mm. love it. Freaking love that. And I, I couldn't agree more with that, man. And one of Jesus's clear messages outside of love, freaking love everyone and be loved, is he says over and over again, like, look, I am like you. You are like me. Like, you can do what I can do. We can do what Jesus does. But people, like, think it's almost like st- it, like dogma to say that, which yeah. is it's ridiculous. Yeah, exactly. Um, Get to the psychic. So, <laughs> yes, I am I am personally, and, and uh, you know, I... I don't care as much anymore, but you know, this, my whole, I feel part of my personal purpose. And I've said this multiple times is to bring clarity and truth around psychedelics and how they can truly help humanity. Cause in the deepest part of my heart, I feel they can. And I feel like they've been stigmatized and I feel like a whole nother thing about the government, not wanting us to have them. And it's literally caused a lot of uh, negativity in my life. There's still family that hasn't talked to me for years and refuses to because of this, but I don't, it's, it is what it is. Yeah. And I, you and know, they like, talk to me. They just probably think I'm cuckoo. <laughs> right. Right. So, you know, this is definitely a stigmatized uh, topic. And, um, that being said, I know you don't care as much, but I do appreciate you speaking openly about this stuff because this is not something to be taken lightly. You know, psychedelics have been, uh, it, you know, used in, in, for in history in history of all different tribes and people and now and then now they've been banned for whatever reason and but now maps is doing so much good work and you know they were so instrumental in my for transformation and megan's well with with ayahuasca so i'm so excited to talk to you about your experiences with psychedelics what you feel because i feel like i feel like they're a bit of a a passageway and a, a way to communicate with this these other dimensions that are around us um but let's start out with your first experience with psychedelics tell me about how it came about what you experienced tell, tell me about all that yeah so uh the first time i was ever introduced to uh dmt dimethyltryptamine uh my friend Corey, he had been talking about it and he's like yeah i heard about he was really into doing drugs uh in high school and um not that i'm calling dmt a drug but uh, he was really into doing drugs, so he was very experimental. And he's like, yeah, that's the one thing I would never do. Wow, I've been seeing 444 a lot, and I just looked at the clock. Uh, anyways. Oh, <laughs> five, five, five. Yes. <laughs> nice. Yes. Uh, so, yeah, he's like, that's the one thing I would never do unless I was, like, 40 and having, like, a midlife, quarter life crisis. And, uh, uh, and so that was the first time I had ever heard about it. And then it really, he, he told me about what it was, and I was very intrigued. And I was not into drugs at all. I was like, wow, this sounds cool. Like, I, I think I want to do that. And so a few years later, yeah, that's when I connected with Remy and I was really searching for the meaning to life. He told me he had a connection and that he had uh, done DMT and how powerful it was. And I said, hey, man, get something. I'm, I'm, I'm in. And so uh, he got some and uh, we smoked it. And at that point in my life, I was more leaning towards being agnostic like i believed in god like deep deep inside of me but i just wasn't really feeling it anymore and Mm -hmm. uh when i smoked the dmt uh everything started looking very reptilian like and geometric i just remember then uh laying back i don't remember a whole lot of it i just remember like going down this red tunnel and i saw these really weird looking beings and they they honestly look like hindu gods and i was like whoa this is probably like where hindu religion came from it makes so much sense now and then uh-huh. i got to the end of the tunnel and it was just like a ball of light and i understood the the meaning of the word infinite love and just infinity in general and i mm. felt like that was when i met god after i came out of my experience with emt um i I have never not believed in God again. I've never questioned the existence of the creator. Like I know there is a creator that, that feeling and that infiniteness is is just absolutely insane. It felt like I was floating in an ocean. 
Um, and it was a very, very beautiful experience. Hmm. That is awesome, that, man. That's awesome. That was probably 2015. Yeah, 2015, I think. Or 14. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, synchronistic. My, um, Whenever Megan and I, before we dated, I, it's not that I didn't believe, but I thought I was a little too logical for it and I'd have to know. And I was just, I'd say agnostic is probably the term for it. And it was actually LSD that changed my life. Well, Megan uh, and her, her teachings, but uh, also LSD that really opened my mind up to this uh, divine creation, divine plan, divine creator. Wow. Um, that's awesome. Um, so why do you think psychedelics are illegal? Um, I think they're illegal because I think they show you the truth of reality. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I also think that... Um, we are in such a fear-based consciousness society and um people are just kind of like scared of like what will happen i i honestly think that there's like a dark force uh that rules the world i can't really describe yep. it but um yes. i feel like that force is the force that uh, this might sound a little controversial um is the spirit because everything has a spirit um i learned this after ayahuasca uh it's the force that runs the government and i don't think yes. that force and that spirit wants us to see the truth because if we did yeah. uh we would cease to fight we would cease to wage war we would cease to kill one another and it would just it would be actually what we're meant here to do which is to love one another that's the meaning of life guys i just gave it to you you don't got to search anymore <laughs> anyone listening you've literally just heard the meaning of life just love there everyone just love jesus said it buddha everyone they said it just love <laughs> yeah. Yeah. there was a funny meme i saw one time it showed like the all uh all the religious leaders all the religious icons in uh in heaven like it was buddha it was um jesus they're all up there and then they're like all right whose turn is it next to tell them the same message <laughs> i seen that too that's funny oh my gosh so speaking of ayahuasca, I, de I this is what I'm like the most excited <laughs> to talk about because ayahuasca was oh, like such a, oh man, big, big impact in my life and, and it changed everything. And talk about spiritual gifts. I feel like yeah. after ayahuasca, mm -hmm. it definitely opened some things up and I can't wait. Mm, well, I'm mixed. I, I can and I can't wait to go back in April to do it because as you know, it can be kind of scary. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, but tell us, and how many times have you done this ayahuasca now? Uh, and, 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 and twice? Three times. Three times. So can you just walk us through those experiences? Yeah, so i uh, done it three times uh, in 2019. <clears throat> uh, the first time I had been going to these meetings around where I work in Rancho Cucamonga. It's about 45 minutes outside of LA. Um, and this guy named... Uh, well, I'm not going to say his name. I don't know if he wants me to say his name. But anyways, he, he was running these meetings and really like showing people how to tap into flow state, showing us the map of consciousness, which is from a book called Power Versus Force and kind of how society is operating and why people do the things they do. I was really getting deep into this stuff. He actually really helped my awakening as well. Um, and then he just said, hey, you know, we're actually uh, having a ceremony soon uh, if you, if you want to come out. And I said, yeah, absolutely. So it just happened. It's like I put the intention and then it just manifested a few months later, like I said earlier. Um, I went, I, I honestly was terrified because I have uh, anxiety issues and I also have suffered with paranoia where sometimes I'll get into these states of mind where I, I actually think someone's trying to kill me. And so my fear was that if I partake in ayahuasca i will lose my mind and i will go crazy and i won't come back so i was pretty scared uh, because I, I have a three-year-old son you know it's like well, if, if i lose my mind <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah, yeah sure. so, so i was terrified but uh, my friends uh, that had done it some people i really respect and look up to they really put me at ease about it and then once you get there they really create an environment for you to feel safe Right. Um, and then you share your intentions, drink it. And then uh, honestly, my first time and my third time, I would say were the most uh, special, especially my first time. So we actually had ayahuasca. It typically comes from Peru. Uh, we actually had a batch from Hawaii. And synchronistically, I had just gotten back from Hawaii. 
and I went by my wow. my wow. first yeah my first time ever traveling by myself. And even more special, I bought my ticket to Hawaii the day before I was supposed to go, and my friends made me do it. I was scared because I was like,、oh, I don't have that much money. My business, but my business was flowing. I was like, my business is really flowing right now. I don't want to get off my flow. They're like, no, you got to go. So I bought the ticket. I went out there by myself. Met a friend. We hung out. She showed me all around the island,、um, and I just had this very, very deep connection with nature. I went swimming with fish, and it was just beautiful. And so I had such a great connection to Hawaii. So when I drank the medicine,、uh, it was just. At first, I started seeing geometric shapes, and then it got very dark. <laughs> And everyone in the room, they took on like these shadow being, looking things. And when you like move on ayahuasca, it looks like you're like glitching, like you're glitching、yeah. in the matrix. So like I just saw people glitching, and I didn't know what was going on. And it honestly looked like they were performing like magic. And it was very dark. And I was like, oh my god, I think I think I joined a cult. Like what did I get myself into? <laughs> I don't even know if I'm going to get out of here, and I had this looming fear that they were like going to kill me or sacrifice me, and then I kept having like these visions of Hollywood, and like I was seeing different actors, and I was like getting visions of like dark magic rituals, and I was honestly terrified.、Um, wow. We did this. We did this prayer, this invocation. I didn't know what an invocation was at the time. <laughs> Now I know it's insanely powerful. We did this invocation, and when they did the invocation, this like beam of light opened out of the sky. This is what I saw, and this this being came to me, and I just I don't know what who he was, but he was like he looked like he was like a Viking or something, and I could just see him, and I I just remember seeing like angels and well I guess he was like an angel and like、uh, what else what else did I see. <sighs> Can't even remember. I saw like alien-like beings, you know, and, and a lot of a lot of robotic and yeah, like it honestly looked like the Matrix. Like there's robot beings like that are watching. You can feel it watching you. Ah, it's, that's freaking. It's, ob- <laughs> it's observing you, and I'm like, well, this is weird. Like I could still feel it.、Um, but honestly, that that experience. Once I took my last cup of ayahuasca, it. I, he asked me, "What do you want?" And I said, "I want to go all the way." When he, when I said I want to go all the way, it completely shifted and changed for me. It went from dark to a beautiful experience, and what I experienced is what I would call nirvana. I was what the vision I kept having was I kept seeing a black panther, and then I kept seeing like a tiger and a snake, and I was laying on like a like a leaf, and they were teaching me about tantra, sacred sexuality, what marriage is actually supposed to be. Divine feminine, divine masculine,、um, how special sex actually is, and like how we abuse it. And I started learning all these. Oh, I want to backtrack. Before I learned about sacred sexuality, early on in my ayahuasca experience, not only was I seeing these dark things, I kept having this loop. I don't know if you guys have gotten the loop, but I kept getting in this loop of like. It was like it was like a sex party all around me, and I just kept seeing sex over and over and over and over and over again because I knew that I I had been abusing sex. That's honestly even、uh, that's even how, that's where it was coming. So your lesson was about what you were abusing and what you needed to do. Yes, I mean honestly, I'll be like I'm 100% transparent. I'm going to talk more about this、uh, throughout my journey. Like my my son. Was a manifestation of my abuse of sex, like me using someone, and so this kept coming up over and over, and it got to the point where I'm like, dude, this is intolerable. I never want to have sex again. It actually got. I, I don't want to scare anyone here, but it got so bad to the point where I was like, this is like torturing me now. I would rather die. But I was like, wait, if I die, I, I do have a son. I do have a family. They're gonna be really upset. I don't want to kill myself because this. God, is- mother, I have freaking lays it to you, doesn't she? <laughs>、yes. This is your issue in your face. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, it's probably just going to continue if I do die. So I'm just going to stay alive and see if I make it out. <laughs> and、uh, yeah, so then it got very beautiful, and I, and I learned about all that great stuff, and and like just having a real relationship. And、uh, yeah, that's really what I got from my from my first experience. And I also learned that I have a huge ego, and I talk way too much sometimes. <laughs> and. People are just very gracious with me, and they allow me to just act a fool sometimes. <laughs> well, well, man, I we need more people talking like you. I mean that in every way, shape, and form. 
Um, I, man, there's so many things I want to say, but I'm trying to like keep it within our, our time limit here. Um, it's so cool. You said, uh, he, that the being asked, um, the being asked, what do you want? Because that is exactly what happened to me. I saw these geometric shapes. Mm -hmm. I got blasted up and there was this beautiful being and it was like, what do you want? Or what do you want to know? It was one of those two. And then that's, of course, whenever I couldn't even think, all I said was I wanted my wife's healing. And that's when she did it. That's when she's like, okay, for me, it was, yeah. okay, I'm going to give you this healing. However, now your mission in your life is going to heal Mother Earth. Now your mission in your life and all the skills we've given you is now to heal people. Mm -hmm. Now you're going to build a community. If I heal your wife, this is what's going to happen. Like, it's crazy how that's uh, that synchronicity there. Yeah. And dude, again, I man, I can't say enough about you being vulnerable, speaking about having uh, those that sort of sexual issues and then her uh, being able to help uh, 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 cure those. Because, man, you know, there's so many things to that. And one of the biggest issues, one of the things I got from my trip too, I'm not trying to talk too much about mine, but it was about creating the space for healing yeah. and what you're doing, what you just did, man, what you just did by openly talking about something so stigmatized, so our America's so freaking hard up on sex and doesn't want to talk about it. Uh, you know, all this stuff by you saying, Hey, I had this problem. And you said it so freaking uh, classy and so like <laughs> full, full, of, full of dignity and like yeah well this is the shit this is what's happening and now it's getting fixed. you said it you you were so vulnerable and so powerful you have no idea how much space you just created with your words for anyone that's listening to this you know we're still a growing podcast but we're nearing that 1k mark anyone that's listening to this that's definitely dealing with sexual issues you just created a safe space for them to be like oh my gosh this isn't such a thing. Yeah. Like, well, it's a thing, but it's like, I can talk about it. Like there's a way to heal it. So dude, I just, yeah. First off, I definitely appreciate you uh, openly talking about that. I don't want, I don't want to let that slip at all. Yeah. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Um, um, go ahead. Yeah. I don't know if you're going to ask me another question. There was a few more things I wanted to share. Yeah, no, this, no. Go ahead. So I want to write a book about this one day, and this is tied to my first ayahuasca experience and my third. So, I, well, first of all, I don't know if you guys experience like telepathy when you do it. Like you can read, it's like you can really feel other people. And like Megan was saying, like after you do ayahuasca, you kind of activate like your superhuman abilities. 100%. Yeah, it's insane. So when I did ayahuasca, I had not talked to uh, Gabby in months and I was still heartbroken. And some stuff happened in our relationship and I felt like it was it was honestly both of us. We were like a mirror of one another, but um, some stuff mm -hmm. happened and we did not end on a good on good term. She ended up blocking me. She unblocked mm -hmm. me and then we kind of started communicating again, fell out of communication. And what I did with ayahuasca, and, and this is so powerful, is I went back to a memory of a night that we had together and I relived it. And it was like she was there and I was there and I talked my higher self, me, I talked to her, oh. her higher self, and I asked Dude, her to forgive chills. me. Chill. The next day, we had not talked in months, actually two days later, she texts me and she says, hey, do you want to go to this music festival with me? Because we both make music. And I said, I would love to. We start talking again. Mm -hmm. We, we kind of fall out of communication. My second ayahuasca experience, but we hadn't talked again in a long time. Right before I go in, because I've noticed before you do ayahuasca, it's like you're in ceremony a week before it even happens. 100%. She texts yeah. me and I ignored her. And I said, I'm not going to text her. I went in ceremony. We talk after, we reconnect. We then go a long period of time again without talking. This last time, because when I was in Spain, my friend was like breaking my balls about this. He's like, Bro, I think you're like, you're abusing drugs now. It's too much. Like, you got to stop doing this. Oh, and, and, and he's like, yeah. And he bred all the bad side effects of ayahuasca to me. And I was like, Bro, I already know that. Oh, thing. yeah. I've studied this. Oh, yeah. And so I started questioning. I was like, You know what? Maybe I really am hallucinating. But, bro, this last time I went in, I go again. <laughs> and I, I had not talked to her in a while. I go and visit her. Because I, when I was in Spain, we had we had decided that we were going to meet when I got back to California. And I get here, I hit her up, I said, hey, I'm back, let's meet up, ignores me. I hit her up again, I said, hey, I don't know if you got my text, let's meet up, ignores me. So um, I go into ceremony, 
I go and talk to her higher self. Her higher self tells me, hey, you know what? I'm not going to text you back. I don't feel like we should see one another right now at this point in time. But I, if you call me on the phone, that's great. I'll talk to you on the phone. And I need you to take some real initiative and just make the phone call and stop texting me and get straight to the point and stop beating around the bush with me. That's what she told mm. me, but in a loving way. I get, yeah. I get out of ceremony the next day. I turn on my phone and there is a text message from her. And it says, hey, I don't really feel like we're aligned around the same page right now. I don't think we should see one another, but I would gladly take a phone call with you. Let's talk. I call, mm. I call her. We have a conversation and I just literally air everything out. I was like, yo, I still love you. Um, I feel like, you know, and that's the thing too. My second ayahuasca experience, I had this vision of her. And this ayahuasca made me like question reincarnation because like I've seen her in many, many lifetimes. I, I, mm -hmm. can, can I speak about this real quick? Mike. Oh, dude, speak about whatever the hell you want. This is this this stuff is what the world needs to hear. Yeah. This is real news. <laughs> so <laughs> I like <yeah>. that. <laughs> this ain't the fake news. <laughs> um, no. So my connection with her is very special, and I, I like sharing this because ayahuasca awoken me to what reality actually is. When I was in college, I was in the marketing uh, club. I was in the mar I studied marketing. She had also been in the marketing club, and her picture was on the wall in the business building a part of the marketing club she had already graduated i remember going by that wall like every day to class by math class which was room 111 i suck at math 111 is my lucky number wow um, 111 yeah. <laughs> and uh her picture was right there her, her name was gabrielle and i like when i even now when i say it like i can feel the frequency of her name it feels so feminine and loving and soft and i was like man i want to meet that girl i like her hair i like the way she looks i like her name so i put the intention out to meet her they told me that she was coming to speak to the marketing club one day because she had been working at Fox and I wanted to get into entertainment. And I was like, oh, I gotta go meet her. So I went, she's like speaking and I'm like, oh my God, I love this girl, she's so amazing. I go and talk to her after and we really vibed. But then I found out she was pregnant and she was, having, she was getting married. I was like, damn, so I guess it, this, ain't, this ain't gonna work out. So anyways, right. uh, she hits me up one day and she's like, hey, uh, me and my husband want to buy a house. Um, can you tell me about it? I told her about the whole process. I was over it and but something inside of me still knew I'm gonna get that girl one day and right. <laughs> uh, so two years later she starts posting on Instagram again and I'm like whoa this girl is like really interesting like she's she's very woke I want to meet her and uh, mm -hmm. I hit her up and I said hey um have you and your husband are you guys still thinking about buying a house and she's like actually uh, we're not together anymore and i was like oh really oh. <laughs> oh really and then so i kept watching her videos and then i was like yo i really think that we should meet we have a lot in common um so we we ended up meeting and uh once we met it was about a week later from then i'd say within the the first two like we didn't even go on a date i just like went over to her apartment the second time i went over to her apartment it was her birthday it was coincidentally her anniversary and that was the night that I knew I was like I, I love this girl I just couldn't admit it and I had never really been in love before it was just a yeah. different feeling but yep. after and that goes back to when she told me like hey you know you're meant to do something great we're meant to do something like you have a serious purpose in life and all of the readings she would do for me when I did ayahuasca it showed me that it's like I've known her many lifetimes and there were even points in I remember the first time that I felt like I was chosen for greatness. I was probably five years old. My dad came in my room. He told me, hey, one day you're going to go to college. He was just like hyping me up, getting me excited about life. And I remember my dad left my room and I felt like so excited. I started picturing myself being a 20 year old, being in college. Where am I going to be? Where am I going to go? It's just a kid. And I remember like there was this presence in my room that I couldn't describe. I just always when I think of the memory, I always feel a presence by the door after my father had left. So my second time doing ayahuasca, I had a vision and I went back to that memory and that presence was me. And it was also Gabrielle. But what I learned was that all these, like you'll get sometimes these feelings, it feels like God or like something's guiding you. And what I realized was your higher self is guiding you at every point of your life to awaken you to your divine calling. And mm. she helped me realize this because I started realizing the important role that she played in my life and how she was meant to be in my life. I, I don't know if we'll ever be a thing again. I, I intuitively, I feel like we will, but I just, it's not the right time. But yeah, Ayahuasca showed me like, we have, me and that girl have an insanely psychic connection 
that I, it's just inexplicable. And when I tell people about it, they think I'm crazy. Sometimes I think I'm crazy. But I, after my last ayahuasca experience, I cannot deny the fact that we have, we humans, not even just me and Gabrielle, but we humans have the ability to tap into other dimensions, get information, draw it back, absolutely. and manifest it into the 3D. Dude, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. That's what I want to talk wow. about. Got it out. Woo! <laughs> that is freaking powerful, Sorry man. Sorry you guys lose. No, no, that is awesome. Um, man, I got like six or seven more questions here, shit. Uh, we have like uh, five minutes. Would you mind me uh, saving this and jumping on another uh, call with you to restart it? Yeah, that's cool. Okay. Um, I'm going to end this podcast. I'm going to uh, open up a new one, send you a link here in the next two or three minutes, and then we'll keep this rocking because I got some other really pretty powerful questions. And uh, this is just too awesome not to, this is too awesome to stop early. Wonderful. Thank you. Let's do it. Awesome, man. I'll talk to you in a minute. Yep. Bye. Hello. Yep, I'm here. Awesome. Welcome, everyone, to the Magical Stories of Healing and Spiritual Gifts podcast. Uh, David Stop here. My lovely wife, Megan, is going to be in in just a second. We had an incredible episode one of the great uh, Joel's Got the Keys, Joel Valdevez, a awesome, real, successful real estate agent, extremely mindful uh, spiritual real estate agent over in California. It was so good. We absolutely had to do a part two here. There was just a few key questions that I... I, there's no way I could leave these out with uh, speaking to someone that's just so vulnerable, open, and just uh, uh, just ego totally to the side and just talking about some really powerful stuff. We made a joke about this actually being the real news. <laughs> <laughs> this is real stuff, man. News is so freaking fear-based. It, it drives oh, yeah. me crazy. I run a business myself. Uh, it's an ADT security business. I teach door-to-door -door sales, and I uh, I have like 25 reps, and I use it as wow. a platform to develop and empower people. And it's the, the, the behind-the-scenes mission is to help awaken them. Uh, and surprisingly, door-to-door <laughs> -door can be pretty Sales in general can be. Uh, mm -hmm. I say all that. Uh, uh, because a lot of the stuff we're talking about, it, it just it coincides perfectly. So what I want to talk about here, um, thank you so much for sharing about your ayahuasca experiences, man, and how we are all so connected and yeah. uh, all of that. And, you know, your experience with Gabrielle, that was so real. <laughs> I feel that. Thank you. Um, what I want to get into now, so you made a comment, and I won't go too much into it because then I'll end up just taking up the whole time about it, but I've had some powerful powerful epiphanies about the freaking dark spirit and how it controls the government like man i'm telling you it's it's crazy how it's coming to me and how my mission's becoming more and more clear and how like why psychedelics are illegal how we're also freaking controlled from the truth and it sounds crazy until you have an experience of seeing what the true reality is and like how everything is trying to control us and stop us from getting to the power that it really is within us um so with that, what is, you kind of answered this a little, so I apologize if um, I'm asking this again, but what is your opinion of the government and the system in general? <clears throat> yeah, so, um, you know, for a long time, Remy, uh, he really, I, I, this word has such a negative connotation. He would consider himself like an anarchist, someone that just doesn't believe in government. He doesn't mean be chaotic and go destroy stuff. He just doesn't believe in government. And he has, for years, has been trying to put me onto this train of thought. And I'm like, no, bro, no, no, no. Um, right. But the deeper that I got into spirituality and, and ayahuasca, it was my second ayahuasca experience where I was like, th they played this song. It's called Spirit Bird. If you guys have never heard it, I would say go check it out. It's absolutely beautiful. And there is a line in there about how the government is taking and robbing and, and just taking complete advantage of humanity and uh i heard that song and i was kind of coming down from the medicine and i was like this this is wrong it, it is it is wrong and so what i did after that was i started watching this guy named uh i think his name is mark passio and he's out of uh i believe pennsylvania he has a podcast and uh he gave a whole nine hour seminar on uh what's called natural law and how if we can understand natural law and how we can learn to master our own do domain, which is our mind. And this is why I think ayahuasca and psychedelics are so powerful is because if we can begin to see the truth of reality 
and we start to work on our inner world, it will be a beautiful uh, manifestation on the outer world where we won't need a government because we'll be able to govern ourselves and live in a loving state. And I know this sounds absolutely crazy and it's probably like thousands of years away from happening, but that is my, like, that's what I want to show people. Like, it just makes so much sense to me. I, I mean, I'm looking, especially at, and that's why I said I kind of got sad and depressed the other day in part one about the state of the world, especially California. They're just in, in, enacting so many laws that are so insanely ridiculous. It's like, how is this even helping people? You're literally robbing from people. People are, there's a mass exodus out of California right now. And I, a lot of my clients are moving out of the state because people don't want to be here anymore. It sucks. And it's because of the government. Um, and yeah, like, I don't, I don't, yeah, I'll just stop there. If you ask me the right question, Man, then that's I'll... unfortunate. Cal- that's so unfortunate because California is such a beautiful state. It is. It what really is. Yeah, if there's any other place we would live, it'd be Laguna Beach. So, oh, we party Love it there. Um, I'm going there on you wanna hear an un- You want to hear an... Beautiful. You want to hear one of my unpopular but extreme opinions that I'm very, very selective. Well, saying it on a live podcast, so I guess I'm not too selective. But I feel <laughs> super comfortable talking to you about it. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. super extreme. It's super uh, out there, and it's very unpopular with very the far, far majority of people. But we would not need a government if people could enact a way out of them true selves love. If everyone freaking responsibly experimented with psychedelics and did ayahuasca, you right now we wouldn't need a government. Responsibly. Though. Responsibly. Responsibly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to. I do not mean to say everyone should go drop an LSD by any means. I don't yeah, want to make and that. Not buy tits of LSD. Yeah, we've had <laughs> our we've had our bad trips before. That's not fun at all. But like what the people man one of the biggest transformative things i know for megan but one thing that shocked me too when we went to our ayahuasca ceremony everyone there was the epitome of genuine oh my love. god if yeah everyone in the world was like all the 40 people 50 people that we met at ayahuasca the world would be a different place they we were, were like like i'm used to people like you meet people they shake hands right like yeah. everyone i don't know these people at all they're like coming up to me like hugging me like uh, they've yeah. known me forever <laughs> like, what is this? zero aspect of judgment yeah. all genuine want to help each other be there for each other man a hundred percent but i don't think the government of the system wants us to know that they want to keep people controlled and i just couldn't agree more i never heard the concept about the dark spirit that's really 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 good yeah um i like that a lot. we we wouldn't need a government because uh if we if we all drink ayahuasca um we would see really the truth of reality and, and the truth is yes when you're in, in that loving state and you realize like even right now like the the possible war that we might go into I know this sounds crazy to some people because you love your country, but it's really just fueled out of retaliation. If one side would just say, you know what, we're not going to retaliate. We're going to let bygones be bygones. Yes, some lives were lost, but it's better than losing thousands more. Let's just stop. If we could just do that and let go of our ego, like we would literally be saving lives. We don't have to go to war. Like, no, we don't have to do that. (laughs) 100%. 100%. I think part of this movement and awakening is selectively starting to awaken people to that reality. People are depressed. They have anxiety. They don't under, they're not aware. I created this formula called the formula for transformational change. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be a TED talk one day, by the way, just saying. It is a bad ass. It's a, dude, it's a legitimate formula. You can take any problem, plug it into this formula. And if you want the change bad enough, you can do it. But the point of it is, um, you know, all these depression, these anxieties, these addictions, these traumas, all the stuff people are dealing with and are hidden, you can overcome all of that. But you got to get over the the uh, the fear of con- the, the condition. You got to get over the fear of judgment. You got to get over your ego. And dude, psychedelics and ayahuasca, it dilutes that. It lets you see the truth of yourself. And the truth is love. Like the yes. self is love. It's all love. And when you're just in, when you're acting your true self in love, God created us all as love. We are love, but we get conditioned. And now people are waking up, uh, I think, because of Mother Earth uh, needs the healing and people need the healing, um, which brings my next two questions for you. Talk to me. You've had some incredible, incredible talks at such a high, awesome level. Um, not, not to build it up. You can just say minor things here about it. But um, uh, talk to me about your concept of the divine feminism, the divine masculine, and what each need to do with our current transition. Yeah, so um, that's something, again, that I learned from from ayahuasca was that 
especially men you know we do we have been programmed that it's it's bad to cry that it's bad yes. to show our emotions uh you know like my, yes. my the ceo of my company earlier he was telling a story about how him and his kids were at the top of a mountain and he was terrified and his son was crying and he thought they were going to die and he had to be strong and not show his emotion that is okay because you have to be a leader there but when when something happens right. when someone dies when when you get your heart broken you can cry you can show your emotion you have to yes yeah. you do because that's how you heal yeah I, i mean that was my story i suppressed all of that horrible abuse for, for years 30 years and and, and I was chronically ill with all these yes. mystery illnesses that no doctor could figure out. And then whenever I had I have the ayahuasca experience and did energy healing, I was like, oh wow, energy sobbing, healing is real. Sobbing, sobbing, deep is sobbing. I've never heard, bro. I, it's, yeah. So I, now I got my feelings hurt. I got my feelings hurt just the other night. But you know, there's always lower vibrational people when you're shining that want to like you know squash you. Yeah. And man, I, it, it's just so crazy because in that moment, I just realized, you know. These people need healing themselves. Yes. Oh, 100%. Yes. You know? Absolutely. Yes. Um, you know something too. But I also made myself cry. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. <laughs> That was the point. Sorry, I kind of lost off track. <laughs> no problem. It happens to me too. Um, yeah, no, ayahuasca. I I think to that men. I I honestly what I've discovered is that from my own personal experience is that I think if men learn how to tap into their feminine side more you'll actually be more masculine uh what yep. what i mean by that is like uh after after i had done my second ayahuasca experience i was doing this meditation one morning and it was like a gratitude meditation and uh i just started thinking about all the women in my life like my mother my grandmother and what they've done for me or what they've done for the men in their lives and how just women in general have put up with men's crap for so long they've just held space for yep. us they've they've allowed us to run rampant and act a fool and they still accept us and i'm like oh my god i just cried i was so humbled if men really understood the beauty of the feminine energy you would be humbled and uh you would stop acting a fool on a consistent basis i sometimes i mess up too i'm not perfect so i'm not saying i am but what i'm saying is once you have awareness you know when you're getting off track and i think that mm. yeah men need to to learn to start expressing themselves and you know what i've had so many men hit me up on on instagram hey bro no homo hey bro don't mean to be weird hey bro i i know this is kind of odd but i really love your videos i really love your content you've changed my life and i'm like Aww. you don't you don't have to apologize for having love for another man we're all humans we're meant to love right. i'm glad that i could evoke an emotion in you i love you too oh that's beautiful dude that's so awesome i love that and i was just i feel that too man i feel like one of my messages from ayahuasca too was go create wasn't just create a space but the, one of the one of my good friends i'm not going to put his name out there cuz you know it's it was his own thing but somebody had an experience in ayahuasca that aligned with mine where right now the feminine the females what need healing uh mother earth needs healing you know men have done a lot over yes. the years and the women have suffered all this trauma they've been oppressed mm. they've been they've had all this stress trauma and to heal there's not one above the other we're equal but the divine masculine has to create a safe space for healing yes. for healing to occur if the divine masculine doesn't create the safe space for healing to occur the divine feminine can't heal um and, and you and and they they coincide and you know what was it interesting oh megan what was it you were talking to that shaman what what about the females and the shaman oh the guy that does yes. that facilitates iboga in, in south america yeah so we we've been interview you've interviewed dude we have connections for ayahuasca in like three oh countries my God, now yeah. where you iboga, want to go you wow. name it it's cool this podcast <laughs> let's go this was so many people but one of the cool stories yeah tell us about that well, i mean i don't know the details really he was just saying that most of the shamans that are like the ones like facilitating the healing during ceremonies is women. He said we have more women than men. The men are just there to be protectors. Mm. Wow. So and I was like are you saying this because I'm supposed to be a shaman? Is it <laughs> <laughs> But it was the it was the the Bwiti, the the Bwiti tribe and the like their their tradition over there most of the shamans are actually the women and the men are there to protect and to facilitate and to help. Um so that was just interesting. Wow. Um 
So do you believe, because I got, I had mixed feelings, man. You know, we all, no one knows, has all the answers and yeah, yeah. we always, you know, we always catch ourselves questioning ourselves. And one of the messages I got in ayahuasca that, you know, when it comes to, and maybe this is still a little bit my uh, totally transparently conditioning um, from Christianity, uh, but I got a message that mother, there is a mother earth. She needs healing. There is a father God, but there's a mother earth. And I got a shitload of flack from that, from a lot of people coming back openly talking about that. I got Facebook messages. I got family. I got, I mean, you just name it. I got a lot of flack from people being like, if it, if they said it's a mother earth and it's a demonic spirit, I'm yeah, like, like You're there's, talking, no mother earth in the Bible. there's no mother earth in the Bible. And I'm like, and that's what got me. I was like, Oh shit, I guess there's not. So I don't, so it made, it, it did, it got, it, I don't like to admit it, but it did. It totally got to me a bit. I'm like, oh, maybe I was wrong. Maybe, but I just remember so clearly, it was, such a, strong it was such a strong message of like, Mother Earth needs healing. She's real. She nurtures. She's loving. She like grows all this food for us to eat well, in the earth. To, and It goes back to what Joel said early on, that everything has a spirit. And yes. So yeah. Earth has a spirit. So, and if there's a Father God, why is there not a Mother Earth? Like right. we have, like for us to be created and be on this earth we have to be born because of our mother and father right so it would make sense right right yeah. well, what's your opinion on mother earth yeah. totally curious about that. um i never really thought of it that way um but what i can say is i can definitely see why you would say that because like i was saying earlier I think everything has a, I know everything has the spirit, everything has an energy. And when you begin to increase your level of awareness uh, in your intuitive abilities, you can begin to feel the spirit and the energy behind everything. And I mean, even if you look at language, like Spanish, for example, certain words are, are end with O and certain words end with A. O is male, masculine, and, and A is feminine. And I think that the earth has a feminine energy. Um, I mean, even honestly, I know this is very controversial, you know, there's certain people, traditionally God is a man, and then there's other people that say like God is like feminine. I think God is like the perfect balance of feminine and masculine energy. Um, right. And, and one of the, the invocation that I do, he says, uh, he talks about the Holy Spirit being a divine, uh, a feminine, a divine feminine energy and presence. And something that I learned from ayahuasca was I remember hearing stories about like indigenous people when I was a kid and how they pray to the moon and they pray to the sun, all this weird stuff and how they're worshiping, you know, plants and stuff. After I did ayahuasca and started getting like really deep into spirituality, I go out into nature all the time. I'm one of those weird guys. Like if you catch me hiking, you might find me hugging a tree. <laughs> I've been caught hugging trees many times. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing. Um, That's awesome. But, I totally talk to our plants. Yeah. yeah. And, and honestly, man, like it has, it has like, sometimes I, I do find myself praying to like, not even praying, but saying gratitude. Like I'll thank the sun for giving me light. I'll thank the moon for her presence. I'll thank, you know, the trees and the grass. And I think everything I'm so appreciative over nature. And I definitely feel that earth has a very feminine uh, and motherly, uh, uh, energy behind it i like you said it provides everything for us it gives us water it gives us food oh, yeah. everything we need to survive mm -hmm. awesome absolutely i'm curious because i know you're a book reader and i'm sure there are tons of our um, listeners that are looking for plenty of books that will speak to them and to learn and if people are just getting their feet wet with spirituality that can really help them get to the next level and understand things you know i know you've recommended the law of light and yep. Um, are there any books that were like just game changers for you that you totally would recommend for people to um, yes. pick up and read? Yes. Yeah. Um, this does not matter what religion you are, whatever, whatever it is. This book, I think, is an insanely great book to read uh, for spiritual awakening. Just honestly, if you want a higher level of awareness and just something to kind of ponder. And then if you, if you apply this book to your life and you start to say, hey, you know what, is this, is this book real? Does it have a point? You'll see how real it is. And it's such a great way to enter into spirituality. My mentor, one of my mentors, Francisco, gave me this book and it's called, um, what, God, I forgot the name of the book. Um, what? Lord, what? <laughs> I, I know, right? I can just see the cover. This book is the book of the century, but you're not getting a name. It's, it's called- <laughs> It's a way to get people to follow you on Instagram. <laughs> it's called loyalty to your soul oh. okay this book will will explain to you guys why you have which i don't believe in why you have bad luck 
it will it will describe mm. why you have certain patterns in your life and it will describe why when mm-hmm. every, everything is going okay you just happen to get a flat tire and your whole day's ruined it'll explain all of that for you in a spiritual way wow. and it'll explain the forces behind it and how you can become aware and and use those lessons as teachers to grow another great book of course it, it's more advanced very controversial is the law of light uh the secret teachings of jesus another book i like is uh this book really really helped me with my anxiety uh the power of now by eckhart tolle mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. because it, it just tells you to be present right now is all we got and uh, right you know, right when, yeah when you can really like embody that it, it's just it is absolute game changer another book too is how to be a success by parmahan's yogananda that book is mm-hmm. an absolute game changer it's basically like a compilation right. of of parmahan's yogananda's teachings um he wrote a book called the autobiography of a yogi it was like steve jobs favorite book and uh, he wrote this book how to be a success and it the the core concept in that book is that anything you want you can have because you are a child of god and you are god's heir and as mm. god's heir you're entitled to all of god's wonderful creations and things he's created for us i love that yeah so those those That's are some awesome. great books amazing thank you for sharing that i'm going to definitely order some off amazon and i oh one more um, one more one more i one do more. have can oh I, go for it go yeah, for it the four yeah. the four agreements that book oh, yeah. talks about the power of language and how when you say negative things or positive things you're casting spells mm. and what yes. happens is people like for example one of my family members people always told him you're a loser you're not going to amount to anything you're gay so all these things that he had not not that there's anything wrong with being gay but they associated it with negativity mm. he grew up right. with like i can't accept myself i can't love myself starts doing drugs mm. in and out of jail um it just living a really really damaging lifestyle but it was all because he believed the curses that someone placed on him when he was a child and oh. uh, and t- isn't it interesting that it's called spelling yes right yes like think about that yes and um, so Quick, one quick question I do want to go back just for a moment um to plant medicine. So now that you've like taken the plunge with ayahuasca, um do you uh foresee yourself uh trying iboga, san pedro, any any of the other plant medicines out there? Yeah, you know, I actually I think that I heard about iboga from you guys, but I just saw the name and I didn't read it cuz I was kind of in a hurry. I don't know what it is. And and san pedro uh is that peyote? I I don't know what that is. You know, I don't I don't know that, but what I've researched and what I've been told across the board with San Pedro is that it's a loving, wonderful experience. Like there's no purging really and it's not scary. So I'm like, okay, I'm all for that one. Um iboga, there can be purging but not like a lot of purging with ayahuasca. And iboga we just interviewed a guy our last podcast was a guy that facilitates iboga in South America and he was talking about um how it's just like a one time thing like most people only need it one time and i've heard the same with san pedro that like after you do it the one time you don't need it but the cool thing with iboga is it cures addiction supposedly what i've heard and the other thing is that you can go in with like four questions and you can ask like whatever it is that you're wanting to know kind of like a genie i mean it can't be like when am i going to die or anything like that but um and like they swear by it that you receive the answer but it's like something where you're like really going within and that's how you heal the addiction i'm assuming is because you're like going within okay um honestly that sounds very cool and i probably would um i the other things i wanted to do sorry mom if you're listening um uh, <laughs> i want i would like to experiment with magic mushrooms and i would also like to uh do peyote because i did a yeah. um a report in college about peyote and it was like back in the 50s or the 60s this tribe in uh, i think it was Arizona they would use peyote in their religious b- circle to experience what they called the holy spirit so the 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 police mm-hmm. the police raided them and uh they took all the peyote they threw them all in jail but what they ended up discovering was that they actually let them go and it was legal for them to use peyote cuz that was something they had been doing before the government was even established and that was how they would experience god through peyote and i heard peyote has a wow. very masculine energy as opposed to where ayahuasca is feminine yes. so i would like to experience that same with iboga 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I know that San Pedro, I think, comes from a cactus. Does pe- pe- peyote come from a cactus? I, I don't know. I'm going to have to know. research yeah. this. But... Yeah. If they call it Father Iboga and Mother Ayahuasca. Okay. Yeah. Are you there? You still there? I'm there. I, I was typing. Oh, yeah. cool, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah, they're they both call- cactus. Um, awesome. So one of the, uh, the last questions I had here was a couple. So how do you feel we can heal the world? By healing ourselves first. Love Um, that. By healing ourselves first. Yeah. So there, there is this concept called the great work. And basically what it is, is like bringing all of your shadows to the light alchemy um, you know, what I do is I, so I learned this from one of my, my mentors, Francisco, he talks about how they did this study on rats and what they did was they had a cherry blossom scent and they had these rats in a cage and they would shock the rats whenever they would introduce mm. the cherry blossom scent. And I'm actually going to tie this into Christianity and, and how real this really is. Um, and so they would shock them with with the scent right and then they didn't do it again for seven generations of rat on the seventh generation of rat they introduced the smell again but they did not shock them and what happened to the rats when they simply introduced the smell was they started freaking out having anxiety going wild because they thought they were going to get shocked even though they hadn't experienced it for seven generations and this is like something that i learned in christianity is that we have what they call generational curses these are things that maybe our ancestors did that are embedded into our dna um both at like Mm -hmm. a, a, a biological and spiritual level that we end up like acting a certain way and so what i realized recently was that where my um where my paranoia stemmed from once i started uh, kind of working with Francisco and he told me how to like go back into your past start reliving memories start questioning like who was my family what did they experience what patterns did they have how are they manifesting in my life I remembered a story and it's like it had just gone away from me my great grandpa supposedly he was uh, he was like a watchman and he was killed while he was on duty he was murdered and so I always had this fear that I always had this weird feeling in me. We, me and Martin Luther King share the same birthday. Um, and I always kind of felt like I was going to like get really prominent one day because of my message and I would become famous and I would get assassinated. Uh, I, I didn't want to put that out there, but I did. And I was no. like, well, where, where does this come from? And then I remembered, oh, wow, my grandpa was killed. And then my dad, when he was in the army, he said three times in one month, uh, this, these people broke into his apartment and put a gun to his head because they thought that my dad was like a drug dealer and he wasn't. So after that, my dad, it kind of gave him trauma and it kind of sent him down a negative path where he became this very like dark person until he became a Christian and, and turned his life around. But I started like taking both of those experiences and what I would do in my meditation practice with, I would just sit there, play some music and I would ask myself to take me back and and become my father or become my great grandfather and experience what they were experiencing experience that fear and forgive the people that put the gun to my head forgive the people that killed me and we did this incredible breathwork practice at work one day and uh i remember i went back and i experienced the fear of my father and i just started weeping and i it's like i could feel his fear in my body and I, then I felt my grandfather, wow. I, I felt my grandfather and I saw the gun go off and it, it was literally like I died and I felt this like euphoria rush through my body and it was like I transcended into another dimension, like heaven, it was weird. And after I wow. just wept and it hurt my body. And I'm telling you guys, I've done this so many times with different people in my family. I'll send them loving energy. I will embody their pain, their hurt, their trauma. And I, be, I believe, wow. That when you begin to understand the hurt and the pain of your family, um, you just have way more like grace with them, understanding. You're so much more appreciative of them. And uh, I believe that yep. when we start to do what what I call the great work, I didn't make up that term, but when you do the great work, <laughs> start to go within yourself and really heal yourself and, you, and your generational line. If we can all do that and drink yeah. a little ayahuasca, uh, we can heal the world, I believe. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So... There's like this 
crazy energetic shift going on right now with all the planets aligning, the full moon, the eclipse coming up. I have always been sensitive, but especially you know, since my awakening, but man, since ayahuasca, it's like insane. And I've been deeply affected by this energetic shift the past couple of days. I finally feel grounded today, but I was yeah. curious if, if that was affecting you as well. Yeah. So, um, so I'm actually like usually really into this stuff. Uh, after, after I started dating Gabrielle, she was like into all of that. And I used to get so mad at her because she would be like, well, you know, the planets are like this and that's why you're acting that way. I'm like, no, I got control over my life. No planet controls me. And then I started like <laughs> looking throughout my life and I was like, oh, maybe, maybe that's why like sometimes I would just get really moody or like certain things go on. Yeah. It makes sense. So um, I said this in the first podcast, the last few days, I had saw something online about there like being an energetic shift and I just I was like you know what <clears throat> sometimes I get like unspiritual I'm like I'm not even gonna read that I don't even believe that and I just went on <laughs> and, but then I, I thought about it earlier today I was like wait I thought I saw something the other day the last few days were just like a struggle like I don't ever have that and I was like what is, yeah. Going, yeah. What is going on and you know what I think I was definitely experiencing it because today I do feel great so, yeah so same here <laughs> Yeah. It's so crazy. Um, so, David, do you have anything else I wanted to ask about? It's my last question that I always ask. But okay, yeah. First. Okay, so not to put you on the spot, no pressure, but I hear you're a rapper. And I was curious if you wanted to drop us a little, you know. A little line. Okay. Um, you know, I actually, I did a podcast a week ago. It's uh, coming out today, and they asked me to rap as well, and I forgot my lyrics <coughs> because I nice. I write I write so much, or like I'll go on periods where I don't write. And I'm just experiencing life that it's hard for me to remember. Um, let me see if I can remember anything. <clears throat> uh, man, I should have prepared for this. You know what, guys? I don't know. It's okay, and I'm sorry to be on the spot, and you don't have to. We can always <laughs> tell people where. To be. To hear in any of you know that kind of stuff that you do so no no worries yeah cool yeah <laughs> i'm sorry no uh, you're you're fine. Fine. this is uh, a last if you can leave the world with one message wow that's uh it's a huge question if i could leave the world with one message what would it be i'm gonna pause for for a moment to think I think that I just want people to realize that you are very, very powerful. Um, I don't think you should be obsessed with controlling everything in your life, but Mm -hmm. you do have control over your life. I mean, guys, I I read this in a Grant Cardone book. He said that, you know, the, the, the reason, and not that money is everything, but the reason why most people don't become wealthy is because they simply don't believe they can the moment that you realize oh, yep. absolutely that there is no difference between oprah winfrey and you there is no difference between elon musk and steve jobs than you you jay-z even said this he said everyone has genius you just have to learn how to tap into your genius oh that's another great book the gene keys by richard rudd you just have okay. to learn how to tap into your genius and when you learn how to tap into your genius and you believe in yourself and you take the necessary actions Mm-hmm. When, and then your faith will make it so. It will make it so. So, guys, you just got to start believing in yourself, and and, be- mm, and that's awesome. And realize that honestly, guys, I I think that I, I'm not speaking for God because I don't know what God thinks, but I really think that it it might it might just be offensive to God when you don't believe in yourself, because if Absolutely. If, if I was created in God's image, God's likeness and God is all powerful, then I believe that we are pretty freaking powerful. and We can really do anything. Absolutely. And if we could collectively come together and start believing this way, instead of disempowering ways and fearful ways, and hating on one another, and instead building one another up, we could really change the world and make the world a much, much better place. And I think that's what I want my message to be. And at the end of the day, I just really want to inspire people uh, to, be, to be what they were meant to be. Which, which is just really powerful, divine beings. Now that's a that's great awesome. message, you know, and for anyone listening that may feel like they're stuck and, and they don't believe in themselves, you know, even just simply something as simple as saying your affirmation every day, like, 
I believe in myself, you know, and saying it repeatedly all throughout your day, writing it down every day. Something so simple as a that can help make that shift. Wouldn't you agree? Of course, yeah. Uh, something that I that I learned at the company I work at, they didn't make it up. It's it's really big in like entrepreneurial space, and they even talked about it today. Is this concept? Um, and a few people talk about it. It's called be, do, have. So most of the yep. planet operates the opposite way. They think that once I have that car, once I have that house, once I have that girl, once I have those clothes, I will be the person that I want to be. I just have to do this. But that's not true, guys. You have to. Be, no, they're gonna want more. Yes, you have to be the person now. How do you do that? You do that by envisioning what does that person do on a daily basis. What do they look like? What do they dress like? Who do they tolerate in their life? What type of behaviors do they have? When you start to become the person you want to be now, and you start to do what that best, higher self version of yourself does, you will have your dream life. That's how you manifest your higher self into physical reality. Awesome. Drops Mike. Yeah. Man, thank you. Amazing. Thanks so much, Joel. Where can everyone reach you? What networks do you want? Anyone that is looking for a home or knows someone that might be looking for a home in California, hit up Joel's Got the Keys. Thank you. He will mindfully, totally hook you up. Do you, are you licensed anywhere else outside of California? Um, At the moment, I'm not. No. Yeah, just California right now. Okay. Yeah. Um, and be on the lookout for the beats you're dropping. Yeah. You know, that's exciting. Well, yeah, where can where can everyone find you, Joel? Yeah, so uh, I would say uh, I have an EP re- out right now with uh, my roommate. His name is Joe, and uh, we named our our collective Unit Twenty Two after the unit number that we live in, and uh, it's called Sundress nice. Season. <laughs> you can find it on SoundCloud at you know just type in Unit Twenty Two Sundress Season EP. It'll pop up. Uh, you could also find me on SoundCloud. My rapper name is Venison Jones. Weird story behind that. I won't get into it. Uh, but I would say if you guys really want to keep in touch with me, hit me up on Instagram at Joel's Got the Keys, or you can also hit me up on YouTube. I'm gonna start dropping a lot of content on there soon. Um, and yeah, if you guys need a home and you're in, in California, I can definitely help get that done for you. Or if you want to sell a home, I can help you with that as well. Awesome. Thank you so much for coming. This has been a freaking blast. And I know this is not going to be the last podcast we do together, man. Good stuff. Thank you for everything. Thank Thanks you so much. Thank you. Thank yes. You. Thank you so much. Thank you. I had fun. Happy healing. Happy thank healing. You. Happy healing. Bye. The podcast you just heard was made using Anchor. Ever thought about making your own podcast? Anchor makes it really easy for anyone to get started. It's a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing podcasts. Best of all, it's 100% free. Sign up now at anchor.fm slash new. That's anchor.fm slash new to get started.